Uh, well, certainly, if I could talk press about uh, World Expo 88, uh, it was, uh, I think, one of the great events in Australian history. With no credit to me, my, my lad, uh, uh, without giving credit to the hundreds of people who became associated with it from day one to day uh, end, as it were. Um, the Expo was indeed an Australian event. Uh, hosted by the Queensland Government uh, in the city of Brisbane uh, and uh, it was uh, ruled and governed by the international body called the Bureau of International Expositions in Paris and we had to uh, abide by the regulations and rules, uh, concepts and so forth uh, of that organisation. So technically we were uh, funded by the Queensland Government uh, hoping that we could pay all the money back at the end of Expo uh, with the sale of the site and so forth. Uh, and secondly, uh, it was to be the event, one of the major events of the bicentenary year uh, of Australia. Mm. And it was, and I spoken to, uh, to Tim Nichols and he was so envious of your position at that time, what was just prior to you taking on the role as uh, chairman of uh, Expo 88, you were obviously the state treasurer until political events conspired against you um, and then you were asked to uh, to chair uh, the expo by um, Sir, Sir Joe and also by uh, Bob Hawke and there's history on the recordings uh, in relation to that where you've done interviews with Queensland Speaks which is an excellent series and highly to be recommended for people to listen to uh, and anyway so Tim was very envious uh, because the current state of the financial circumstances at the moment is that we really couldn't put an expo on the credit card as we effectively did in those days, didn't we? Yes, it was. It was um, one of the conditions between the Australian government and the Queensland government uh, in, I think, 1982, when I was treasurer, or early 83, uh, was that the Queensland government would underwrite the event. And that uh, means that we they would provide the funding uh, and uh, would, at the end of Expo, uh, be responsible if there was a loss. Uh, but the concept in the beginning was to sell the land immediately after the Expo for commercial development. Uh, and uh, uh, that would make the difference in the income from the daily operations of the exposition uh, and the cost of putting it on and the acquisition of the land. Yes, there was a... Extraordinarily uh, good concept, I, uh, I think. So just going back to the G20 um, and the celebration, because it was such an iconic event, as you rightly identified, uh, and hopefully the G20, uh, the opportunities presented to uh, to, uh, to Brisbane and to, to Queensland and to Australia uh, will be such that Brisbane can come to the fore again, like it did during Expo, and uh, leverage off the opportunities uh, that it presents. And I just see that celebration of the 25th anniversary is a good stepping stone, you know, stepping up to the mark to then, you know, take advantage of all the opportunities that are likely to come out of the G20. Well, I think uh, it is a golden opportunity for the city of Brisbane, uh, literally as a host of that event, um, to connect to what was a, uh, a, a remarkable experience for most of, many, many of Australians. It was alleged uh, uh, at the time that probably around about 31% of the whole population of Australia visited the Expo site. Whether that is correct or not, I don't know uh, how that was worked out because we didn't ask any people at the gate where they came from, but surveys did show that that was probably the situation. Yes. But I think the important factor was it was an Australian event of which the city of Brisbane uh, hosted uh, and it was an event that had a big impact on not only the whole of Australia but in many cases countries throughout the world. It's interesting, I, there was one particular YouTube that I've done with one of the, the major sculptors that uh, where a piece is owned by the Brisbane City Council, Barley Oaks, mm -hmm. which owns, uh, the council owns gestation. And I'd done the three interviews on Skype um, and we'd finished it and then he said to me after the last one, he said, oh, can we go back on to, to, to be recording because I have a particular statement to make. And I didn't exactly know what he was intending to say. And so we went back live, and then he delivered the most prophetic uh, 
sincere thanks to the people of Brisbane, uh, and I was just gobsmacked. Uh, and so, yes, the expo experience really did embed itself into so many people throughout the whole world. It was quite amazing. Mm. Um, and with that, we might just conclude this particular part, um, uh, and we'll come back in a second because I'd like to clip onto this a couple of um, pictures that uh, uh, Rick Birch has given me, which I haven't had a chance to, uh, to show yet, but uh, I'll take the opportunity. So uh, with that, we'll say uh, good morning. Thank you.